Final Frontier. Bit of a Star Trek reference there for you. Okay, um, so new video, uh, not so much a new setup, but just me going back to the more studio edited sort of stuff. Been having a really tough month or two recently. Um, just lots of things happening um, and just silly things like losing part of the plug for my ring light so then my ring light wouldn't work and it's really hard to find a good natural lighting in my house especially in my youtube filming area and it was just oh a to do a to do um but i'm back with my proper setup uh, um trying to work on some different things in the background here this jacket is centuries old and by centuries i mean maybe 20 years um but i this was used in a tap troupe when i danced with michelle slaters and i freaking love this jacket um and i'm going to be using this in an upcoming video that i'm filming with my niece keisha from secret life of tweens we're filming on the weekend and these are my current point shoes if you were to zoom in on both items, you would see that they have stains, which looks a, look a lot like coffee stains on both. I don't think they're coffee stains, but let's face it, it's me. They probably are. Um, but I'm basically trying to use things I've already got um, to dress up my set, pretty much. Um, Charlie is just running. trying really hard that's another reason why it's been difficult for me lately um just schedule wise having two kids and a shift working partner it just makes it, it's difficult it's been really difficult to dedicate time to youtube and because it doesn't generate any income for me yet it's really hard to justify spending the time to do it but it's been a really good experience for me because i've missed it and I really enjoy doing it, um, so I'm gonna do it. So today's video um, is about costuming. Now, my two problems with costuming, um, like as in me doing the costuming, is I'm not a great sewer at all. I'm really not confident on a sewing machine, um, and money is always an issue with costuming. They can get really, really out of control expensive really, really quickly. But I also have an issue with just waste in general in the world. Um, I wouldn't consider myself a big environmentalist or anything like that. That's just the door closing if, if, if that came up. I don't know. I'm not a massive environmentalist, but I do want... I just I hate when things are wasted. Like you, you, in dancing, we use something once for a concert and then we don't use it again. And that really, really irritates me, especially because all it takes in any aspect of life, all it takes is a little bit of creativity to figure out how to reuse something. And in the dance industry, we have buttloads of creativity, okay? So why can't we reuse things? Why can't we figure out how to use something again? Um, so what I'm gonna be doing today is a DIY tutorial for costumes. These costumes are for I would say for recitals, concert, that kind of thing, probably not for comps, but you can definitely use the the, the concepts and the, this sort of theory. If it suits a routine, go for it. The reason I say this not for comps is because comps do require your costumes to be, you know, that little more exy sort of level. Um, but at least with a comp costume, you're generally going to do it more than once, unless you dance bombs. Um, you're generally going to do that routine at least for a full year season of comps so you'll get a bit more wear out of it i suppose i'm talking mostly to the studio owners here now this doesn't mean that you need to be doing the sewing yourself but um these are just clever waste reduction ways of getting nice costumes for a concert or your recital without charging your families an, a fortune and maybe maybe making a little bit of money yourself so a few quick tips to start with is buy sets of basics so if you uh, black is a really good color 
Um, this costume here, we wore that with black sequin pants. So just your, <laughs> here you go, just your standard <laughs> kind of see-through sequin fabric. We all had a pair of kind of mid-rise um, wide leg sequin pants in black. We all had to have them pretty much. And for concert time, we would, excuse me, put that away. For concert time, we would often just mix and match those pants with something else. And they were really, really classy. They looked effective on stage. They weren't the most comfortable things to dance in because the fabric's a bit itchy, but, and it's they're see-through. But you don't need to line them because you wear tights. If you want them to still have a mat, like, black then you just wear black stockings or we would just wear a black leotard um this jacket and the pants our tights are like tan tights and the pants it works beautifully for a tap routine um and really really nice for even like a broadway jazz type routine those pants we wore with quite a few things you could just get like a cool you know you can get so many awesome leotards now put a you know bright colored leotard with those black pants and you've got a costume. Um, so get yourselves basics. Now you can either get your students to purchase them for themselves or you purchase a set in variety of sizes for your studio and then hire them out to your students at concert time. Other garments that are really good to have as a set for your studio and that you then hire out um, are standard leotards, so black leotards. Um, really good ones to have as a basis um, or a, a color that you know your school uses um, so for me it was always that sort of fuchsia pink or magenta -y pink cerise whatever you want to call it it's everyone has a different name for it but this color that was my studio color because it's my favorite color as you can't tell by my hair um, so I would have a set in these of this color and a set of black um, companies like Weissman are really good for getting sets of things. So you could get a set of, they have some beautiful, I'll insert a picture here. Uh, they have some beautiful like sequin fabric garments, some metallic fabric garments. Um, and because they're a lycra base, they, your sizes are fairly generous. Uh, so maybe get a, a set of the sequin singlets, camisole singlet, um, Maybe crop tops, shorts, leggings, whatever. Ballet skirts, uh, they're sometimes a good option. And I see it a lot when I go to dance school concerts where they'll do, um, look, it's, it's quite effective, but they'll do things like get a, you know, just a simple class leotard and a ballet wrap skirt, this kind of thing. These are both from Studio 7 which is a lovely Australian company that are doing some really great things. Um, yeah, so just, you know, simple ballet wrap skirt. Problem is, if you put a leotard, when you see a leotard and a wrap skirt together, it, it kind of just has this it, ballet class. And you do want something a little bit special for performance. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two ways of using your ballet skirt and a leotard. Okay, so just two basics and adding a few little extra things and designing and styling it in clever, interesting ways in order to have an effective costume for concert. The other thing I'm wanting you to to remember with this is we want to be able to reuse these garments so we're pretty much not going to be permanently adding or attaching anything everything is going to be temporarily added my last tip before I get into the actual tutorial my last tip for this kind of costume is please remember the, the 50 foot rule or you know whatever the distance is it's stage guys you won't see bad stitching you won't Okay, and I've got, a just, I've got a, I'll show you. Okay, so these pants that I'm wearing, these leggings, I stitched, the waistband came off and I stitched them back on. Now you can see there, can you, can you actually see? You can see that stitching because it's up close 
and it's um, yeah, I've zoomed in. Okay, you can see that. But if I was to wear them on stage, you wouldn't be able to see it. You just you just wouldn't. Okay, it's so fine, and it's yeah. So for concerts, don't get for anything on stage. Don't get bogged down in the details and the neatness of it. Okay, especially if it's on the inside. Like who cares? No one's gonna see it. Okay, and if you are worried about it. Get yourself a set of Sharpies or permanent markers in the same color as the garment. So in the case of these leggings, I just need like a navy blue Sharpie. Cover over the stitching. Can't tell you how many times I've done that. Um, and you can also do the same thing for safety pins. You can paint them. Any kind of paint, nail polish works, spray them. Um, yeah, and it works a treat. Okay, so let's get into the actual tutorial. So what we're going to be making... I've got um, a set here of wipes. So again, Studio 7. Now, I'm, this isn't a sponsored video. I wish. One day I'm going to be able to come into a video and say, this is a sponsored video. It would be so exciting. Um, but this is just, I used to stock a lot of Studio 7 stuff in my studio. Okay, a little white Studio 7 leotard. And a pull-on Studio 7 chiffon skirt. I've also got a wrap-around black chiffon skirt. Bring it over here, sweetie. A wrap-around skirt in black. And, that's a crossover, <laughs> and a leotard in black. Same style leotard, different style skirts. Thank you, sweetie. Just going to put this back on for my bubba. Here. No touch. No touch. Okay. All right, so we have huh, a white set and a black set. Um, now, really basic, obvious stuff to start with is switch your colors. Okay, so instead of a black and black and a white and white, black and white on both, you've automatically made this bit more oh that's interesting okay um, and that could be the that's the one routine okay one routine one kid's got this black leotard and white skirt the other's got the opposite okay it looks really effective you can do it with any color combinations um, it gets a little more complicated when you get into multiple color combinations but it still looks great really effective okay the next thing I'm adding to this is lace lace motif this one looks expensive, it wasn't. I have a really good supplier that I go to relatively close to my house. Um, very cheap um, and has an interesting variety of things. Um, but normally you'd pay oh, probably $15 a meter for something like this. I did not pay anywhere near that. Um, but it's, you can't always get a good supplier close to home. Um, wish amazing for this kind of thing um, other bits of lace that I get from my same supplier but you can get on wish these kinds of ones now this one's really needs to be pressed <laughs> uh, but this one has a v-neck and you can put that straight onto the neckline of a leotard and you've got a costume and I did that a lot you can buy these already beaded or you can buy them plain like this leave it plain or you can beat it yourself um, we would safety pin these on or just tack them on and they would make a real difference to a costume so you can go and buy on on wish or if you've got a supplier if you're paying much more for one that's not beaded if you're paying more than like five dollars Australian you can find somewhere better trust me cheaper trust me that just on the leotard can look absolutely beautiful. I'll try and insert some photos of groups that I've had do this before. For these costumes, we added the V-shaped motif to the collar, but also added it to the skirt as an overlay for this girl in the white. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you in this white one, white leotard, black skirt, a way to wear the skirt that is different. Okay.
unfortunately, I can't show you the finished product of these items because this happened. Alright, I'm done, babe. Because I just knocked everything over. Yep, clumsy Claire struck again. There was coffee everywhere. The white leotard is now a lovely speckled brown, and my ring light is yet again broken. Seriously, Claire, why does this stuff keep happening? Ugh. Anyway, here's some cute little dancing gifs for you to watch while I do the outro. Thanks heaps for watching. Hopefully you've learned something and got some inspiration and new ideas from watching this video. If you have, hit the thumbs up button. It really helps my channel out a lot. And make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get updates for when I upload videos. I'm also uploading everything directly to Facebook as well, so you can follow me over there. Um, and if you have any ideas for videos or if you want some um, information on anything dance related, pop it in the comments or email me and I will see what I can do. Thanks heaps guys. Bye.